This is the Missing Persons Reports, brought to you by Jamaica Chronicles. A high alert has been activated for 12-year-old Alicia Gobi of Bay Road, Little London, Westmoreland, who has been missing since Wednesday, December 27. She is of dark complexion, medium build, and is about 5 feet 2 inches tall. Reports from the Savannah Lamar Police are that Alicia was last seen about 12 midday in Savannah Lamar wearing a white sleeveless shirt, a multicolored sweater, blue jeans, pants, and a pair of black slippers. All efforts to locate her have proven futile. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Alicia Gobi is asked to contact the Savannah Lamar Police at 876 955 2536, the police 119 emergency number, or the nearest police station. At the same time, an Ananda alert has been activated for 14 year old Mary Kate Richards of Laburnum Drive, Portsmouth, St. Catherine, who has been missing since Tuesday, December 26. She's of dark complexion, slim build, and is about 5 feet 7 inches tall. Reports from the Waterford Police are that Mary Kate was last seen at home about 6.30 p.m. wearing a red dress and a pair of black slippers. All efforts to locate her have proven futile. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Mary Kate Richards is asked to contact the police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. An alleged gunman was fatally shot on Thursday morning in a reported confrontation with the police in Ellerslie Penn, Spanish Town, St. Catherine. The police said three guns were seized at the premises. The deceased has been identified as 29-year-old Sunman McFarlane, a laborer of Ellerslie Avenue in the community. The police report that personnel from the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Division armed with a warrant swooped down on Ellerslie Avenue in Spanish Town in search of McFarlane. According to the police, while the house door was being breached, it swung open and a woman approached the team, during which time McFarlane was seen on a bed pointing a firearm at the cops. The police say the cops opened gunfire at McFarlane, who fell, and the firearm was retrieved. The injured man was assisted to the Spanish Town Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. The police say the room was searched and two additional firearms were found, one under the mattress and the other under the bed. Meanwhile, the Independent Commission of Investigations has launched a probe into the incident. Five people were shot and injured on Tuesday night when two men drove up on a motorcycle and began firing at patrons attending a gospel concert in Christiana, Manchester. Their injuries are not considered life-threatening. The gun attack happened after 11.30 p.m. Despite the incident, the police are assuring the public that they are doing everything to keep them safe. Head of the Manchester Police Division, Superintendent Shane McCullough, said the gospel concert is a very peaceful event and the act was unprovoked. He's asking anyone with information on the shooting incident to contact the police. The information that we have at hand is that the incident happened shortly before 11 p.m. thereabout. I must say that the event is a yearly event, a very peaceful event, and this act is unprovoked and a senseless one. The information is that two men on a bike rode up minutes to 11 and opened fire indiscriminate, indiscriminately at the persons standing outside the venue. At this time, we do not have any established motive as to why this senseless act occurred. Unfortunately, Five persons, which includes a female, were shot and injured right, during this senseless attack. Their status at this time is considered not to be life-threatening. Our empathy goes out to the families of these persons, and we're hoping and praying for their speedy recovery. And we just use this medium to just to reassure the law-abiding citizens of our continued commitment to ensure that we maintain and keep the space safe for them as we move into the new year's eve we also you know use this medium to ask the persons who have 
any information that they think can be useful no matter how simple it is just to please to make contact with the police so that we can do the necessary to bring the perpetrators of the census act to justice in the shortest time possible a man is dead after his motorcycle collided with a stray cow on the Petersfield Main Road in Westmoreland on December 24. He is 29-year-old O'Dane Dennison of Piper's Corner, Savannah Lamar, in the parish. Reports from the police are that about 1 p.m., Dennison was driving his motorcycle along the roadway when he collided with a cow that walked into his path. The police were summoned and Dennison was taken to the hospital by a passerby, where he later succumbed to his injuries. Dennison is the third person to have died in the parish since the start of the year as a result of untethered animals. At least four illegal firearms were removed from the nation's streets during the Christmas holidays following various operations by members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. One of the firearm was seized by an off-duty policeman in Grange Hill, Westmoreland, on Sunday, December 24. A 27-year-old man, Shamori Miller, a carpenter of Godfrey Street, Grange Hill, was charged with unauthorized possession of a firearm in that matter. Two seizures reportedly took place on Christmas Day, one of which yielded a Arcus 9mm pistol along with a magazine containing two cartridges. The police said the seizure took place along the Bull Bay Main Road about 12.37 p.m. According to the police, acting on information, a team of lawmen signaled the driver of a white Toyota Pro Box to stop. He complied, and a search of the vehicle and its occupants resulted in the discovery of the firearm and ammunition in the front passenger door of the vehicle. Six people who were on board were taken into custody. Also on Christmas Day, the Hunts Bay Police seized one Taurus Millennium pistol fitted with a magazine containing 11 rounds of ammunition while on patrol along East Street in Kingston. The police said that about 3 p.m., lawmen were on patrol in the area when a man was seen along the roadway. Upon seeing the police approaching, the man ran and opened gunfire at them. While evading the police, the firearm fell. It was retrieved by the police and taken in to be processed while the man managed to escape in the area. The Denham Town Police in Kingston Western also recovered an illegal firearm during the period. Reports from the police are that about 3.10 a.m., lawmen were on patrol and saw three men. Upon seeing the police, one of the men threw an object. When it was retrieved, it was discovered to be a Smith & Wesson 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 11 rounds of ammunition. All three men were taken into custody, but their identities are being withheld pending further investigations. A man was shot multiple times by gunmen while making his way home in Borka Field, Old Harbor Bay, St. Catherine, Monday night. The injured man remains in hospital while his attackers are being sought by the police. The police report that about 11.40 p.m., the man was riding his bicycle along a dirt track on his way home in Borkfield when he was pounced upon by three gunmen who opened fire. He was hit several times, including in the abdomen. The gunmen then escaped into the area on foot. Residents then took the injured man to the Spanish Town Hospital, where he was admitted for treatment. The police were summoned, and upon arrival at the scene, several spent casings were discovered. The Old Harbor Criminal Investigation Branch is investigating. The National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, says a fish kill in the Rio Cobre on Christmas Eve is now contained. According to NEPA, approximately 50 fish were seen floating on the river on Christmas morning and it was discovered that the pollution was due to a malfunctioning National Water Commission sewage treatment plant at Charlemont in St. Catherine. NEPA says the defective plant caused untreated sewage to be emitted into the Old John's Gully, which flows into the river. The NWC has since corrected the problem which was due to a power outage at the plant, the environmental agency said. 
Napa added that it will be serving the NWC with an enforcement notice on Wednesday to outline specific terms to which the entity must comply as a result of the incident. It is the latest pollution of the Rio Cobre in St. Catherine. Earlier this month, there was an oil spill in the river that was emitted from the former Jamaica Beverages plant that is now owned and operated by Trade Winds Citrus Limited. NEPA also reported that the directors of Trade Winds Citrus Limited have been served with an enforcement notice under the NRCA Act and a summons to appear in court under the Wildlife Protection Act. I just want to say on behalf of myself. Veteran DJ Spraga Benz is addressing his absence at Sting, which unfolded on Boxing Day at Jam World in Portmore, St. Catherine. The artist was set to perform during a segment that featured 10 giants of dancehall integrating more seasoned acts, as opposed to the criticisms of last year's new gen lineup for Sting's return. But as the night went on with greats like Capleton, Tanya Stevens, and Bounty Killer taking the stage, Ben says he was not given the opportunity to perform. Spraga hinted at poor coordination being behind the failure. The matter of time and stage management have plagued many events in Jamaica, with Sting being no exception. Ben's also highlighted this in another post which chided artists who monopolize the stage. Popular selector Supa Twitch echoed the sentiment even pinpointing cyclical disrespect hurled at Benz throughout the years. Though he refrained from name-dropping the culprit, some people are blaming Bounty Killer for Benz missing the mic. The Warlord had an hour-long set that featured run-ons from multiple acts like Cham, Richie Stevens, Joshi, and Kay Queens. Other spectators screamed injustice at jester artists like Queen Lady Gangsta, getting to perform over a seasoned act like Spraga Benz. I just want to say, on behalf of myself and the whole Let's Create team, was present and ready last night to perform at Reggae Sting 2023. Due to circumstances beyond our control, you know, they anticipated the performance, never manifested. But Look out for us again next time, you know, in more organized environments. Yeah? That's the fire.